Welcome back to Covered in Pet Hair. I'm your host, Isabel alvarez Arada, and today I have the pleasure of having a drink and a chat with a pet parent, a dog trainer. She's a researcher, a blogger, an entrepreneur. She's an Uber driver, an adventure seeker, a wine snob and cocktail connoisseur. She loves her coffee. She's originally from Queens, New York, and still roots for the Yankees and the Giants. She's a former military spouse that moved 14 times in 27 years and currently resides in her happy place, Charleston, South Carolina. She's married to her husband, who she refers to as Doodle Dad, and he says she's too loud, apparently. (laughs) And she's the dog mom to two golden doodles, very lucky golden doodles named Harley and Jackson. She's the creator behind Groovy Golden Doodles, which is a blog, and she's also therapy animal coordinator for the largest hospital in the Southeast. Her name is Kathy Bennett. Welcome, Kathy. It's so good to have you on the show. Wow, that was pretty interesting. Thank you, Isabel. <laughs> it's my pleasure. I took some information you gave me. I did a little digging on your on your website, on your blog. If it's any consolation, people think I'm too loud too or loud. And I'm like, really, am I? I don't realize it. I think that going forward, the new term is going to be spirited. We're just spirited individuals. I'm we're much passionate. Different. We're passionate about everything. And, and we just... We express that through our vocal communication. That's just who it is. I love that so much. I'm going to remember exactly what you said, and I'm going to verbatim repeat that every time somebody says that I'm loud. Perfect. That's it. (laughs) That's it. Well, before we go into your obsession with golden doodles, I want to introduce our drinking game today. So anybody participating in our drinking game at home, my guest won't know it. But anytime you hear this word, make sure you take a drink of whatever it is you're enjoying. But please be over 21 in the U.S. to partake. Never drink and drive and always drink responsibly. So I saw on your blog that you only drink red wine, water or coffee. Is that right? That's correct. And which one are you having tonight? It's six o'clock, girl. I have my my typical Pinot Noir. I got uh, actually two bottles of a wine that I've never had before for Mother's Day. So oh. I've thought that it's coming out of Oregon, nice. Samuel Robert Winery. It's not bad. It's not bad. But I do enjoy a Pinot Noir um, after I've walked the boys and just kind of woo sawing for the afternoon or the evening. I love a Pinot Noir and a Pinot Noir out of Oregon is always a good idea. Today, I'm actually doing a mocktail, which I have called a Malaise Mule because I am nursing uh, a, like not a hangover, but like, I guess like a, a, an emotional and physical hangover. I got a stomach bug from my kids. If you watch this show regularly, you know, I'm always sick because I have two young children and they bring everything home. So today I'm having Something that it kind of looks like a cocktail because it has ginger beer and Pellegrino mixed in it half and half. And it feels like a cocktail, but it's light on my stomach. So cheers to you. Thank you for being on the show and making cheers. Me get that woosah here that I needed so badly today. I'm impressed that you even took the time to put a lime into your mocktail. That's very impressive. Thank you so much. It just makes the whole experience that it more does more it does. special. Well, actually, speaking of special, I want to play a game with you because I always introduce this show with a game and I obviously want our audience to learn more about golden doodles. They are super popular breed. Everybody knows somebody with a golden doodle, but not everybody knows about golden doodles as a breed. So today I'm inviting you to play Fact or Fiction, Golden Doodle Edition. Oh, Lord. (laughs) Okay. I'm sure you're going to know plenty. This is uh, all the facts at, or fictions I took from Wikipedia. And if it's a fiction, I kind of sort of changed the fact to see if I can catch you in that lie. Uh, so the first one is a golden doodle is also known as a brutal in Australia. True or false? True. It is true. That is a fact. All right. The golden doodle is a crossbreed of the golden retriever and the labradoodle. False. <laughs> That's right. It is a crossbreed of the golden retriever and the poodle, guys. All right. The next one, the golden doodle is bred in three different size varieties corresponding to the size variety of poodle used as a parent. Tricky question. You've altered that one. 
Um, there is a mini standard and a large. So I'm gonna go with yes, true. Yes, and it's based on the size of the poodle that they bred, is that right? Generally, yes, because poodles come in different sizes, not necessarily a golden retriever. Correct. I actually never thought about that until I started doing this research. Makes perfect sense. You don't see many golden retrie golden retrievers, but you do see mini, mini golden uh, mini poodles. All right, this one's actually very interesting. Okay. Monica, Monica Dickens, the great granddaughter of Charles Dickens, is said to have bred a golden doodle in 1969. If she did, I'm going to go with yes, because why would we lie? Yes. Okay. She, she did. She kind of did. There was no more information about that on Wikipedia, but that was really fascinating because the next question is golden doodle breeding, however, started to become popular in the U.S. and Australia in the 1990s. Fact or fiction? Probably fact. It is a fact. It is indeed. Okay, there are three main golden doodle coat types, straight, wavy, and curly. Fact or fiction? Fact. That is a fact. And is that based on how curly the poodle is? Ah, trick question. It depends if it's breeded in a first generation. Then the answer would be yes. Ooh, okay, interesting. All right, often claimed to be hypoallergenic or non-shedding, golden doodles do shed hair, although often less quantities than many other dogs. Tur correct. That is true. All right, the AKC asserts there is no such thing as a completely hypoallergenic dog. They do, that is correct. That is right. And the last one, in general, healthy and well-bred golden doodles have a lifespan of eight to 12 years. Uh, that is correct, considering that Harley has just celebrated his 13th birthday last November. So actually, they actually, I was that was a fiction. It's actually longer than that, 10 to 15 years. You're right. Mm -hmm. uh, so thankfully, because that is a concern for golden retrievers a lot, that they are not living that long. So now you see a golden doodle is living 10 to 15 years, which is very good news. So... When I did digging on your blog, I uh -oh. saw that you were not raised with dogs. You didn't really like dogs until the golden doodle. So tell me, was it one golden doodle that changed your heart? It wasn't one as much as it was um, many that I saw. So you have to understand that after uh, that many moves, um, then by the time we retired, the kids were in college. I'm not going to say I was an empty nester, although my children will disagree with me. <laughs> um, I was kind of enjoying life, riding my Harley, you know, just hanging out. Yes, I'm a Harley rider. And um, close your mouth. I close love you. that so much. <laughs> Hence Harley's name. Now, um, it was the golden doodle that I saw that I was attracted to because to me, it reminded me of when I was a little girl and my growing up in New York and we would go to um, into the city and go to Radio City Music Hall a lot, especially during the holidays because of the Rockettes and the Christmas show or whatever it was. And when you're a little girl, you know, whether you buy something or not, you always spend an hour in FAO Schwartz, mm -hmm. which at the time was the largest and the best toy store in the world. And to look almost like that stuffed animal behind you, to look at these really fluffy kind of teddy bear um, stuffed animals that would be on the shelves, that's what the golden doodle always looked like to me. Something that just um, out of a Disney movie, one night they just came to life. And so I was fascinated by them. Uh, a career in human resources has taught me that I have this drive to research every and anything. Um, Kimberly and I often laugh because I call Mr. Google my man. <laughs> and, um, you know, I'll, I'll Google the death out of something, resurrect it if I have to, to get to the answer that I want or need. Um, but in doing the research, I became fascinated with not so much this hypoallergenic where the dog does not shed anything living, sheds something. Right. Um, but the reduction in the amount of shedding was appealing to me. 
not having had any success growing up with pets in the family. And, you know, I'm going to put a disclaimer out there for anybody that knew me from my childhood. This is not a dig on my parents. They were wonderful, incredible people, but they just didn't do animals. And that's right. okay. Right. But if you are a grown adult and you decide you want a dog, a Belgian Malinois is not what you're going for. Mm-mm. You need something that you know you won't be afraid of something that will fit your lifestyle. And I just kept seeing these dogs in the various different locations where we were living towards the end of my husband's military career. And I just became infatuated with them. I loved um, their personality. I loved listening to the stories that their um, pet parents or handlers or owners would share with me if they, you know, would give me some time on a street corner and talk to me. It just seemed to be the dog for me. That is so awesome. I do want to add that you are the co-host of the Girls with Dogs podcast with Kimberly Gautier. And uh, I did not mention that when I introduced you, total total slip of the mind there. But I do want to make sure that people know that you are the other half on that awesome podcast. I am the other half. Yes, I am. Which yes, you- is crazy. It's very, it's, we're having a lot of fun. And if you've never listened to, um, here's my plug. If you've never listened to Girls with Dogs, um, I encourage you to do so. Kimberly and I met as um, bloggers years ago, almost mm, 11 years ago. And for the most part, um, our relationship has been telephone conversations on a regular basis, just about weekly. Once the blogging conferences kind of dried up and people stopped traveling. I didn't get to see her as often, um, but the conversations continued. We blend really well together. Um, And Girls with Dogs is nothing but a recording of our weekly conversations because we do talk a great deal about dogs. There's a lot of things that I've learned from her um, in terms of nutrition. And there are some things that I'm comfortable saying that she's learned from me in terms of what I'm doing with the dogs and um, anything outside of nutrition. But, um, but yes, so I am one half of girls with dogs and very proud. I think you should be very proud. I listen to it often and it's such a good time. It, It really is like listening to two girlfriends have a chat of like, And you talk about more than just dogs, but mostly dogs. And I really liked when you had that aha moment with the why your dog always brought you like a toy or guest toys every time they walk through the door. I mean, we've all had a dog like that. And so those kinds of things you do pick up, you do learn, but it's also really entertaining to see the dynamic you guys have. I think the the comment that I cherish, and I can't remember the name of the person that wrote it, um, She said that she enjoyed listening to us so much that she laughs at herself because sometimes she interjects like she's actually on the phone with us, not remembering that this is a recording. And so that (laughs) that's kind of what we were going for. Never thought we would get there. But yes, but we're having a good time. And uh, August will be our first anniversary. That is awesome. Congratulations. It's such a good show. It's so fun. And it is on all the podcasting platforms. I listen to it on Apple Podcasts, but I'm sure you're on Spotify and other places too, right? Yes, we are. So tune in. Yes, definitely tune in. Okay. So what inspired you to start your blog specifically about these golden doodles you so adore? Oh, Lord. Um, I have to give it to my daughter, Tiffany. She was um, finishing up in the College of Charleston. We were in Washington, D.C. And when I got my second golden doodle, Leo, everywhere we went, we got stopped. So, you know, you're in D.C. It's that city where you're out and about all the time. And so we would grab them and take them. National Harbor, Inner Harbor, anywhere you can imagine that we went, people were stopping us. They were asking us a ton of questions. It got so common. Again, I'm a researcher. I ended up creating, it's just so embarrassing, created <laughs> these, you know, common question and answer trifold because we were repeating ourselves over and over again. Um, You can go to some of the earlier posts way back in 2012, I think is when I started. 
and you could see us just trying to do Christmas shopping. And there would be seven and eight people deep all around us. Everybody wanted to take a photo. Um, I've been at the Inner Harbor and had people there doing professional photography for a Kinsietta or a bridal shower. And they said, can I borrow the dog <laughs> to be in the photo? So I thought if I created these trifles, you know, um, if people were really interested, then they could just go ahead and um, learn more about the dog and maybe get one for themselves. So I think my daughter said, you need to start a blog. And I thought, I don't even know what you're talking about. Um, there was a gentleman from church who was our web designer for the church. And I talked to him and he graciously came over. Um, he said, what's the name? I said, I don't have a clue. And so my daughter was in the kitchen and she, she said, golden doodles are groovy. And all um, Lamont did was flip the words. That is awesome. I love that so much. It was meant to be here. You are 10 years later, right? So it's, it's been a yeah. 10 year, you're celebrating a 10 year anniversary of your blog. I am. That I is am. amazing. It's been 10 years. You're helping golden doodle families learn more about their golden doodles. You're sharing your experience with yours. And I want to dig into more about your perspective on golden doodles, why they're great, why they might not be for everybody, but we have to take a break, listen to our sponsors, and we'll be right back with Kathy Bennett of Groovy Golden Doodles to tell us more about those dogs she so loves. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Covered in Pet Hair. I'm your host, Isabel alvarez Rada, and today I'm speaking to the blogger behind Groovy Golden Doodles. We just learned how Kathy Bennett came up with the idea, thanks to her daughter, Tiffany, and a web designer from church. Thank you, web designer from church, for gracing us, all of us, giving us the gift of helping Kathy so that we could get this information from her. I want to know, Kathy, if you want to play a second game with me, but I need you to be really honest in this one and dig, maybe dig a little deep to find the good, the bad, and the ugly when it comes to golden doodles. Are you open to playing this game with me? I'm open. All right. I'm so open. I, I know it's going to be hard to come up with the bad and the ugly of a breed that you so love, but it doesn't have to be just about the breed. It could be about the pet parents of the breed. It could be about breeders of the breed. It could be about anything related to golden doodles. Okay. And I, I'm going to give you up to one minute for each category. So you have up to one minute for good, up to one minute for bad, and up to one minute for ugly. Ready to go? I think. All right. Three, two, one. Good. What's good about the golden doodle is that he has this this built-in radar in terms of understanding what it is that they need to do for the human in their life. They are very intuitive, they're very um, receptive, and they're very, very easy to train and work with. Oh goodness, that was perfectly succinct. All right, bad. What's bad about the golden doodle? Um, brains are not always a benefit, okay? I have one Harley who literally looks like if he could curse me out, he would. Um, it's just his way or no way at all. And that's the bad. Sometimes they're a little too smart for their own good. Is that the poodle side? I would think it's the poodle side. That's what I, I hear. And I. Would and I hear that the intuitive side is the golden retriever side. So you've touched on both of their benefits. Mm -hmm. All right. Last one is the ugly. Three, two, one, go. Girl, I have no ugly. And I'm just, I, I'm just being very honest. You know, um, one of the series that I wrote in my website when I got Jackson and I was, well, God, almost 60, um, was that I, I did this thing called Diary of a, of a Middle-Aged Puppy Mom. And it went for about four or five um, posts, and then I stopped. You know, I'm, I'm not in the prime of my life. I don't have little children, so I can dote on them all the time, um, which makes it easier for me. But I have no bad. There have been no bad days with these boys at all. And so I can't even make anything up. It just isn't. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Is there a problem with bad breeders, like backyard breeders? Do you find that because they're Absolutely. so popular? Okay. Absolutely. And my experience with Harley was, um, was really um, 
a great way to start, unfortunately. So I, again, researched, did not have a clue how to even um, select the proper breeder. And that's why it takes me so long. I've only endorsed two breeders in my entire life um, because that's a very delicate topic. And I don't want to get caught up in having somebody experience what I did. When I decided to get a golden doodle, I drove five hours to this little, oh, behind God's back town in Pennsylvania. I called purposely like ridiculous amount of times and they talked to me constantly. Um, they were very patient. They explained their whole process. It was a family owned business. I felt as if I had made the right selection. When I got to the breeder, they sat me in this beautifully contemporary decorated um, lobby area and they kept bringing dogs out to me. I inquired one time about whether or not I could go in the back with them. Um, and they were like, I don't know what BS response they gave me, but I believed it because I didn't know what I was doing. And I'm no different than so many people. And it doesn't matter what kind of dog you're getting. Um, I don't even know if the pregnant golden doodle that they brought me was Harley's mother. I don't know if the big copper red poodle with the long legs was Harley's father. I believe what they told me left a deposit and I came back when Harley was born. I remember, in, I remember exactly when the father, because it was a father and a wife and then a son and a daughter-in-law. And when the father came and brought Harley to me, you know, there was a counter between us and he put Harley down and Harley literally a nine weeks old leaped into my arms like a rabbit. Um, we brought him home the next two days. I guess I took him to the vet. Um, the vet looked at me and said, this is the sickest puppy I've ever seen. Oh, no. She said, he is so infested with Giardia. This is not even like real. She said, I've never seen this in all of my years of practicing. She <gasps> said, now, whatever's wrong with him, she said, I can certainly. You want to say hi? Come on. <laughs> is that Harley? Come on. Come on, this is Jax. Come on. Uh, you need more room? <laughs> You're so old. Oh Say hi. Goodness, so beautiful. Look at that big face of yours. Hey, I'm Jackson. Say, I'm my oh mom's my. Spicoli. Oh my gosh, she's and I, so beautiful. I'll tell you some things about Jax later. But anyway, <laughs> um, so long story short, I called them back and let them know what my vet had said. And she explained that Giardia comes from, you know, swamp water and all of that. Well, she literally told me, she said, um, the next few months are going to be touch and go. She said, um, Kathy, I'm, I'm not kidding. This is, this is bad. Now, I've just had this dog for like two, three days, and oh he's already gosh. just like stolen my heart. So my daughter, again, was um, home. She had finished college, and so she was back living with us. And we literally, for weeks, we did, we just made sure that Harley was never, ever alone. And we were able through a myriad of different things to get him back. Now, truth be told, maybe three months later, four months later, I got to a point where I started tethering him to me. We were in the kitchen and we were just sitting down. The news was on. I could have been cooking or what have you. And I remember Tom Brokoff had this breaking news story about this puppy mill that they in Pennsylvania that they had just infiltrated how this man they had been trying to catch this family from New York to Jersey to Pennsylvania and they finally caught him they said they found over 200 carcasses in the freezer <gasps> and they sentenced him they they the family went to jail now I'm sitting on the floor holding this dog, just rocking back and forth, crying profusely because, and I don't even know why. And so it took my child to say to me, you don't understand. Cause I was thinking I should have never gone there. And she said, you don't understand. She said, you were supposed to have Harley. That's your heart dog. And you were supposed to have him. Had you not been there? She said, um, there's no telling if he would have survived. Exactly. And so that's kind of been our connection yeah. ever since. But yes, so I tell you that long story to tell you that there is 
I think they are bad breeders, regardless of whatever dog that they are trying to to breed. Right. Um, I think backyard breeders is not the correct term. We need to educate people to stop doing that. I, I think that there are unethical breeders. There you go. Who um, have nothing um, in their path in terms of their goal oriented um, direction other than to make money, money, to profit off of what the demand is. And that unfortunately has happened to all of the doodles. Mm-hmm. Um, when they tagged these dogs as designer dogs, that was the nail in the coffin. I, Tim Kimberly was absolutely astounded one day when I told her that there are like 61 or 62 various different doodle breeds now. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. It is they're doodling everything. They're doodling all of them. <laughs> and they're, they're not, you know, they're just pimping the poor little poodle out I and know. they're not taking into consideration that genetically and um, characteristically, even personality, you have to be able to be succinct. You know, the Labrador, the Golden Retriever, and the Poodle, they all have something in common. They have many things in common. And I think when you take some of these breeds, and Lord knows I'm not going to name them, they're so opposite that it's unfair because the dog doesn't know whether to bite you or lick you. And, (laughs) And I think (laughs) I think that that's so unfair, but that has happened. And that's what also has made a lot of people on one hand, Isabel, a lot of people have gotten the dog of their dreams because they've taken, let's take, um, and there's nothing bad with this. They've taken, you know, big dogs and bred them with poodles or dogs that have a lot of um, shedding. Mm -hmm. and bred them with poodles. So now they've got these dogs that are just absolutely adorable to look at. I mean, it makes everybody feel like apple pie ice cream and a Ferris (laughs) wheel all rolled up into one. Um, But is it fair to the dog? What are you doing to the dog's lifestyle? How difficult will this dog's life be when it gets older? What type of medical issues will it have? What type of um, longevity in terms of being on this side of the rainbow bridge. So there's just a whole myriad of things, but that's not backyard breeding. I I don't like to say it. It's just irresponsible. Irresponsible, Um, unethical. I agree. And unethical breeding. Yeah. So what would you say to somebody who wants a golden doodle and doesn't know where to start? Well, I, I get this question a lot. Um, there are two breeders that I have a personal connection to. Um, one is in Virginia and one is here in South Carolina. That's, that's the first thing that I would do is I would start there and offer those two websites and say, this is where I think you should go because this is where I've been. And this is what I believe in terms of ethical and humane breeding with the golden doodle there. While the um, they're not recognized as a breed, there are certain sites where you can look at, um, thanks to Mr. Google, <laughs> and find out if they have been accredited, you know, in terms of their breeding ethics. Okay. Um, but I think the most important thing that I remember from my experience with Harley is that you want to be able to go and see it all. Mm-hmm. You want to see everything. Um, and then you want to talk to people this is no different to me than, oh God, this will get me in trouble, than um, any form of adoption. You want to do your research. You of want course. to make sure that you understand the lineage of um, where this dog is coming from, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and so that's what I would recommend. It's a lot of research. And don't be afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to look to people online when I was looking for Harley, I don't think that I had the wherewithal to look for a golden doodle breeder. I mean, a blogger or, Mm -hmm. um, you know, just somebody out there on the internet and say, I don't have a dog yet, but I'm still interested. So I I think that I would tell people to be patient because this is a lifetime commitment. Don't rush it just because somebody is trying to give you a dog might Mm -hmm. not be 
the dog for you. Golden doodles, let me, don't get it twisted. Golden doodles are a lot of work Mm -hmm. because there's something very, this is creepy, but something very human about them. Yes. They do not, they thrive with human companionship. Okay. Um, Because of where I am in my life, I was able to dedicate my entire world that first year to the dog. And that was the conversation that um, Lee and I had before we brought Harley. This is going to change. Now, listen, I had no children at home. I was semi-retired. We would ride our bikes, you know, from Charleston to Atlanta to D.C. back. I mean, just, hey, hanging out. You know, we could leave literally for a day trip and end up buying underwear and toothbrushes somewhere (laughs) because we were too far to try to come back the same night. So all of that had to change and it didn't have to change forever. But in doing my research, I knew the first year of a dog's life was going to dictate what the rest of your life was going to look like. Absolutely. And I had to make that commitment. And then I had to make it again with Leo. And then I had to make it again with Jax. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was okay. We were okay doing that because Harley showed us exactly what the outcome was going right. to be like. Well, and I want, I'm so happy you've said that because when you were saying that you were walking around DC, I spent many, many years in DC. I had a business in Northern Virginia. Not every dog is going to be comfortable being in a, in an urban environment like that. Not every dog is going to be comfortable with a million people coming up and asking their mama questions. You obviously socialized and did really right by your dogs in order for them to be comfortable in those settings. And I don't want people to think, oh, golden doodles just automatically are that way. That Mm -hmm. is reflective of the time and the effort that you spent in socializing and them and acclimating them to those environments. So bravo. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you. Now you do some therapy work with them. Is that right? That is correct. That is correct. That is a whole nother um, chapter, which still I find to be just a a tad bit um, bizarre, if you will. But um, I guess Harley was four or five, not four. And Jack's, I mean, uh, Leo was two. Uh, My mother was in her mid nineties and she started to show signs of dementia. So I was living in Virginia. She was in New York. Um, We eventually brought her to Virginia. And from coming to Virginia, we found a beautiful Christian family. assisted living facility for memory loss. Now, before we moved her there, one of the things that was very perplexing to me is the attachment between her and Harley. And I could never really figure it out. I enjoyed observing them together because before dementia, my mother had nothing to do with dogs. And now they were thick as these. I remember she was having difficulty reading. And, you know, you try to do whatever you can for your parents. Um, You also try to convince yourself that what you know is happening isn't really happening. So she had her glasses, but she still said she had difficulty seeing. And I said, you know what? I'm going to run to the CVS up on the corner and get you a magnifying glass. It was raining. So I said to them as her and Harley were just standing there in the doorway of the storm door, I said, I'll be right back. So she said, we'll be right here. Well, I didn't know she meant that literally. I went to the (laughs) store. I bought this magnifying glass. When I came back, they were still standing there, but they were like thick as thieves. She had one of those three pronged leg walkers and she was so dangerous with that thing. I said, you know, she's going (laughs) to amputate Harley's toe. I mean, his tail. People are going to think he's a Wheaton Terrier. Um, but like he would freeze and not move. And they, um, Lee and I had a talk and I did a lot of soul searching and praying and I quit my job and my mother became my ministry and I would go every day and slowly but surely I was going to her room and then somebody was walking by asking if I could bring Harley to their Aww. brother's room, to their mother's room. And so I realized that I needed to kind of validate what I was doing again spend some time with my man, Mr. Google, and 
went ahead and got both Harley and Leo at the time certified. And um, even when she couldn't remember his name, she would ask me, where's Poochie Poochie? Aww. And she lived to be uh, a few weeks shy of her 99th birthday. And Harley wow. was there. If, I mean, the whole time he was there when she transitioned. Um, mm. It was a relationship that I knew was going to help me in my healing process when my my parent left this earth. Of course. We shortly moved to South Carolina and I wanted to continue what I had been doing with both Harley and um, Leo, but Leo did not live long enough to make it to South Carolina. So when we got here, I um, looked around and somebody told me that the Medical University of South Carolina had a therapy program. So I got started there. And for two years, I did some therapy work with the children's hospital. And, you know, I am a firm believer, as my pastor says, that people, events and circumstances are going to cross your path. And you have to be able to understand and hear the voice, knowing your heart and your spirit, that this is a discernment of what you're supposed to be. And so when the position was recreated and it was going to become a true coordinator's job to build this program and create an environment where people could um, anticipate therapy animal visitation. I applied for the position and I got it. And that was in 2018. So I got to tell you this funny story, which I usually start out with when people have me come and speak. Um, I'd been in the job for about three months and I live a mile from my job. And it was a beautiful October day. And I said to my husband, I said, you know what? I think I'm going to ride my bike. So I tossed my keys in the little bowl. Everybody has a bowl in their foyer. Okay. (laughs) So I tossed my keys in the bowl and he got my bike out from the back and I was on my way to work. And I thought this guy saw me, but he didn't. So he Uh hit me. So I got hit by this car. And um, I remember I was in the ambulance and My husband showed up and we rode to the hospital. Um, I'm in the ED. My co-workers, I, you know, called to my boss. I was going to be a little late. I had not been in the position, but three or four months, because I think I took it the latter part of July. So keep in mind that nobody knew me. Okay. So here I am. I've got the, I'm living in my happy place. My daughter just got married in 2015. My son was dating this lady I loved. Um, I'm in my happy place. We're renovating the home. The sky's always blue. I got this dream job. I'm a mile from my house. What's happening to me, God? Why is this happening now? So I've had the x-rays and whatever other tests that they took, something with my head to make sure that I was okay. Um, And I'm laying in this hospital bed in the emergency department. And the thought that all of this could change now started to resonate with me. Right. I can see my husband and my four coworkers in the corner and they're not giving me any kind of a look that makes me feel like I'm going to be okay. And the little clock in the ED is getting louder and louder with its annoying little Timex tick. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And so all of this is happening and it's like in slow motion. And this is what happened. Somebody knocks on the door And a friendly face sticks his head in and the face looks shocked and I look shocked. It's one of my volunteers with a golden doodle named Ragamuffin. And he says, I had no idea it was you. He was on his shift. The ED is part of his shift. When he got to the desk, they said, there is a lady over there in bed 11. She got hit by a car this morning. They're waiting for the test results. She might be interested in a pet therapy visit. Remember, I've only been in this job three months. They don't That's know me. so crazy. And so when they came in, now, of course, Ragamuffin knew me. So he Aww. brings the dog over to my bed. The dog puts his two paws up on the little gurney. I start rubbing behind the ear. And as I am massaging this dog's head, the burning stopped. The tears started to dry up. I didn't have that sensation and that feeling. My breathing started to subside. And that, Isabel, is the story 
that I tell all the time. It's the story that travels with me every day that I go to work. It's the story that I never want to forget because it's the story that I'm able to remember when I go into a patient's room. I see myself in that bed. Yeah. Um, when I see husbands and daughters and, and, and children of patients, that's my husband and my coworkers that I see. Right. I get it now. I understand it and I get it and I never want to forget it because I want to continue to be able to remember that. So I have all the empathy and the compassion and the drive to make that possible. I love that so much. You are, I am beclamped by this story. Thank you so much for sharing. I'm like, it's so true though. It's like these things happen just to confirm that we're on the right path. And obviously I'm so happy that you're safe. I'm so happy that, you know, you recovered. I'm assuming fully. I did. But that you have this experience and this energy that goes with you, that that understanding is invaluable Absolutely. to people in those situations. Absolutely. Ab- absolutely. Well, tell us how my audience can learn more about you and your amazing stories, all that you have to share with not just the golden doodle lovers, but <laughs> dog people in general. So even though my blog is called Groovy Golden Doodles, what I write about predominantly is of course, the breed, um, therapy, animal work, which is so near and dear to my heart. Um, being a pet parent, dog mom, fur mom, whatever you want to call me. Um, so that's that's what encompasses my blog. I try to do it in a story written form because I want people to sit and read and smile and have aha moments. Um, yeah, you might learn something. Sometimes you might not learn a damn thing, but you just <laughs> enjoy reading the story, looking at the video or um, some of the pictures that I post about the boys. Charleston is a very pet friendly place. So I love to always kind of expose that with all of the different things that we're able to do yes. and, and still do with our dogs in tow, which is so important. Girls with dogs, like I said, that is just Kimberly and I talking about dogs and what it's like being girls with dogs, why we don't get as many Manning and Pennies as we used to, but you know, <laughs> how we're, we're trying to keep our dogs the healthiest and the safest and the oldest that we can. Um, so yes, this is, this is kind of like what I do that and my, um, therapy work, but on my blog and on any of the social media channels that you can think of, you can always reach out and find me. Um, and I'd love to connect with everybody. That is awesome. You are such a gift. I've so enjoyed. This is the therapy I needed today. Is that what happened? The next four, the last 48 hours have been rough. But thank you so much. You put a smile on my face. I just want to propose a toast to you and your family and those wonderful well, golden first, doodles. First, oh. I have to tell you this, and I meant to tell you this before, before we toast. We have another friend. And I was told to tell you that Jeannie Taylor said to tell oh. you hello. Of course. It's so funny. I have such a connection to Charleston. So many people in Charleston. I write for Mount Pleasant Magazine for Health Links Magazine in Charleston and the Upstate. So do I. That's so As funny. As a matter of fact, I did the cover feature story. This is coming out this month for um, Charles uh, Mount Pleasant Pet Magazine, uh, House in the Hospital. So you know Bill. Yes. Yes, I did the cover story. So it's coming out. I'm really excited about that. That's but Jeannie, awesome. Jeannie and I go way back in the sense that when we were in Virginia, Exactly. Um, That's how I know Jeannie. <laughs> Harley and Leo and Jax grew up at Old Town Pet Resort in Springfield. Okay. So she says to me, you know, I always, I'm going to mimic her. I always wanted to take pictures of Harley and Leo, but you know, she said, you were just so damn popular. And I just felt <laughs> so damn intimidated. So here we go. I come to Charleston and I'm asked to do a uh, stage presentation on therapy animal work. And um, I guess it was the Pet Expo, mm-hmm. the Low Country Paws Pet Expo. And I go on stage and I hear this little tiny voice go, Kathy Bennett, <laughs> Kathy Bennett of Virginia. So we literally moved to Charleston in October of 2015, the same month. I told her the other day, I said, I am 
going to talk to Isabel on um, her podcast. She says, I know Isabel. I said, shut up. Yeah, and she said, no, I she's do. Taken, she's taken that photo, that photo. She's taken photos up there of all of my pack. Like she, she is, is she yeah. is the photographer behind Groovy Golden Doodles. Oh my God. That's so funny. Cause I love the yes. pictures and I, I noticed that they're beautiful pictures. So she anybody is- who doesn't know she, Jeannie Taylor, it's Jeannie Taylor photography. She is the best pet photographer. She specializes in pets. Oh, she is. She's, she does so much volunteer work to help pets get out of shelters and out of, uh, yes, you know, rescues so that they get really good pictures and get really good so I'm, traction. I'm actually going to, um, I'm writing a book golden doodles from a to z and she's doing all of the photos for me so when it comes i'll let you know yeah i need to get i want to get her on the show but she doesn't want to she's that's not her that's not her that's not her (laughs) we can talk about her but you'll never get to talk to her exactly right well again okay so let's propose a toast to Jeannie taylor as well Jeannie. thank you for all the good stuff you do Jeannie, and for all of the photos i like will cherish forever cheers you and me both. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> and then to you, to you, Kathy, for everything you do and for your family and for your golden doodles and that therapy work you're doing. Cheers. It is so important. It is. It is. And thank you. And to you, okay, for you. highlighting people like me and Kimberly and hopefully Jeannie one day. I know. I love to do it. This is what makes me happy. I want to talk, talk to the to interesting her. people. Yes. To all the amazing people in our industry, because there are so many and they don't get highlighted enough. And I, including my executive producer, Mark Winter. Mark, thank okay. you for, for Pet Life Radio. 70 shows. We were podcasting before podcasting was a thing. So here's to Mark and to our audience for amazing. spending your time with us. Yes, Mark's amazing. And all of the shows are amazing. So check it out. And I might put you in touch with another couple of host so that you can talk about other things like therapy I would love work to. specifically. Yeah, absolutely. I would love to. So thank you to everybody for joining us today. Here's to yes. a life covered in pet hair because there's no better way to live. Cheers. Exactly. Cheers. To learn more about covered in pet hair, please visit coveredinpethair.com or petliferadio.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.